She fires. Got it. Fair lane. Lawson's down there trying to find the sump plug. <laughs> uh, he has changed oil on the Subi before, so he, he should know what a sump plug is. We'll see if we can if if he can figure out where it is on the ZG. So see that thing there that hanging down that yeah that thing you got your finger on? Yeah, that's what I was looking at. That's the sump. All right, so there should be a bolt. Is that where you had your finger? Is that the actual bolt? This? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Oh, it was it. That's the sump plug. Yeah. So we want to pull that out, drain the oil out. All right, mm -hmm. Lawson, what do we got? So we got the water neck. Yep, new, new water neck. And a new water pump. Oh, yeah, pull that out, Charles. Yep. Okay, cool. Alright. And thermostat. A new thermostat to go in with the water neck. And the new oil filter. So the oil filter and we've got some special oil over here. Um going with what's that? 4x4 four four diesel oil? What? Oh. Special reason, mostly because that's what Derek uses it's got all the vitamins in it for the old worn out 302 you want to well i believe you want a, a, a pure mineral based oil not a, not a synthetic one um and you know she's a tired old engine so that's what we're going to put in it for the start anyway and we'll we'll see if we come up with any better ideas later but for the first oil change that's what she's getting yeah. Yeah. and um make sure it's in the the undo switched position, the undone it, or the do it up position. Which way is that? I don't know. <laughs> Just turn it and see. So you want to go anti clockwise. A lefty loosey. The last few couple of turns you want to do really quick and pull your hand away. Take the, take the rings off. Yep, there's definitely oil dripping out of it, so that's good. Was pretty easy to undo. Yeah. So those bolts are always well oiled anyway. <laughs> so got oil. And when you get it out, don't drop it. Try and bring it out. We want to see if it's magnetic and see if there's any. I dropped it last time. Yeah. Try not to drop it. We'll see if there's any um, filings or metal shavings on it. Okay. So we'll just let that drain for a while. There's a fair bit of oil in the uh, pan there, but. Ah, oh, I think I mentioned in another video, it smells rank, it's old oil and, and petrol, you can just smell the old petrol. So, there's the underneath of the car, she's, she's well uh, weather beaten from that old Outback Queensland roads, red dust and dirt and yeah, she's, she's going to need a bit of love under here. Yeah, it does say here it, um, it is suitable for use in uh, mixed fleet, mixed fleets with older petrol and or LPG powered vehicles. Well, we're going with the older petrol. Uh, yep. All right, yeah, slide that out to me. Uh, we'll just give it a wipe, wipe around the hole, slide that out to me and then just put the rag on the ground under where any oil might drip. And can you bring it out behind your head there? Get old oil out. Yeah, and just um, sit that rag under where it drips from and then yeah, get that ratchet on there and just tighten that up, but not 
you don't over tighten oil plugs you just sort of get it snug it up and then just give it a tiny little bit more that should be good um, I didn't hear you ratchet it at all but is it oh it's like can't go like that. yeah and just uh, just maybe just give it just a touch more that's it good <clears throat> Hey Lawson, hang on, where'd you go? <laughs> he stood up. Um, did you see the oil filter under there anyway? I think so. All right, let's get under there and have a look at the oil filter. I can't see it. Where is it? Stick your head under there and see if we can point it out. Uh, this. It's there. Can you get your hand on it? Yeah. Excellent. All right. Just a bit full, so we'll get rid of this oil before we take the filter off so it doesn't drop in there and splash. Always a good idea to have a few old oil bottles lying around for your, for your old oil. You don't trip out the side. Uh, just looking at the last bit of that that's besides being really thin from having petrol in it it's very um, there's no chunky bits that's for sure there's no grit no yeah nothing it's, yeah. it's the yeah so first up we want to see if we can actually uh, loosened up by hand. I highly doubt it being there for so long, but you never know your luck. It's gonna half fill up with dirt. Is it? Yeah, that's okay. Dirt, dirt falls in there, that's alright. Can you get a good grip on it? Sorta. Of. Sorta, of, and try and turn it anti clockwise. If not, I think I've got a. Um, Oil filter, oil grabber, an oil filter grabber. That's what they're technically called. Probably oil filter wrench, I suppose. It's um got a rubber, yeah, I can't get rubber that. around. All right, I'm going to go and grab the um, oil filter wrench. One-handed action. So I've got the new filter here, just a Ryko. Uh, what I want to do, is just see. Yeah, that'll fit over it. So this one, I've got two of these for some reason. Over the years, you just collect things. Probably forgot I bought one once and bought another one. Um, this one's adjustable. And it's got the rubber in it. This one doesn't have the rubber in it, but it has a swivel side to side, so, you know, it allows you to get into more tighter places so I might try this one actually I might get under there and do that myself and see how I go with it you can be videographer oh, that rubber's had it that actual bush there on the sway bar it's just um it's like it's melted so every single uh, set of bushes under here it's just you know all the all the replaceable components are going to get replaced you got all the bushes you know, your tie rod ends and whatever, um, ball joints, all that sort of stuff. They're going to order some of that stuff in. You get some of this dirt off. It's just, <laughs> the oil filter's just caked in red dirt as well. It's the story of the fair lane, really. That's good. That's come on, done pretty good, actually. Probably get up with my hand nearly. Bring it. So, there we go. Oh, beautiful. Didn't even drop any oil until I tipped it over. So there's, can you see that? <laughs> that, that oil field has been on there for a hell of a long time. I can't even see what brand it is, it's just caked with 
Well, a bit of, you know, a bit of oil and grime, but then red dirt over the top. We'll get out and have a look. All right. Yeah. So the seal was still good, but you can just see it's covered in all this red dirt and a little bit of engine oil build up of grime there. But as to what brand it was, well, it looks like it was orange. I'll scrape it off. That could be a brand there. What's that say? Road, road, ROA DG. That later. Ah, oh, Roadcraft. Never heard of it. Heard of Motorcraft, obviously, with Fords, but not Roadcraft. That must be some dodgy knockoff brand. Looks, I'm tipping oil everywhere. Yeah, no, that's all it says on it. And it was. Yeah. Roadcraft 63, 63, 3, 637. <laughs> do, we, do we win an instant scratchy? You know, but scratch it off and you have won a million dollars? No. Yeah. I'm not putting in the comments if you've ever heard of a Roadcraft. Obviously, this was its size code for the, for the uh, 302. But yeah, it's a new one to me. Look at that rubber inner tube as a bush for the radiator. Bush ingenuity. Crack these. Uh, automatic transmission. Uh, lines off the radiator here. Sure, there. Yeah, sort of a two part thing. So that part going yeah, to that part. Looks like it. No, I've never really taken one of these off, I suppose. Oh, I have actually in a Subi. But, uh, hopefully automatic transmission fluid doesn't just leak out of them. Gravity seems to be on our side, so... Yeah, the bottom one leaks. We've got carnage, blood spilt. Actually, that's the transmission fluid, and it looks nice and bright and red, so that's good. second hopefully everything else should be free pick this up get it out yeah out of my way there you go she's an old ready yeah So I've just um, taken the cap off the radiator valve release here and we got the tiniest little pst and that was it. There's no gas in it as you'd expect. So that's good. You don't have to worry about that. So we can just dismantle it. That's, uh, the uh, air conditioning cooler radiator cooling unit that can be stored why is this bolted on this is power steering pump ah wow 
And then we have to get the fan and pulley off the water pump first. One air conditioning pump, delete. Yeah, fuel line. That's a fuel pump. This just dirt. Uh, there's the filter we put on yesterday. So we don't know if the fuel pump works, but I guess we can only try it and see. Well, we've got the radiator out, all the air conditioning components and bracketry, and just move the um, power steering pump out of the way for the moment so we can get to the water filter and that's where we are now so we're about to start unbolting the water filter and see if that'll pop off yep I'm glad we picked up a new water neck <laughs> it's just full of oh, that, that thermostat in there is just I think that's what it is it's just fully corroded you can't see it yeah look in there Just totally shredded up in there. So good call, new water neck and thermostat. Hopefully we can get most of that out. I was just telling Lawson there that it's not a good idea to use your your impact driver on bolts that are, especially ones that are in in your um, engine uh, block. Um, it's okay if you loosen them off and then you just want to screw them out but um, yeah always a good idea just to crack them first with a, a ratchet or a spanner in case they look like they're going to snap but these ones are coming out okay so that's good I'm going to have to hold that nice and straight and crack that one uh, hold the other hand on top you need a hand there in there to hold it up, keep it up nice and straight, and this one to put leverage in it. Just totally gone. One blend. 
little bangs like that make you blink. I don't know. They, <laughs> they do make you blink, don't they? It's annoying. Like, I was trying to stop myself from blinking, <laughs> but you just can't. <laughs> Probably a bit away, but I don't know what it is. That isn't you can see that one. That would help. If you undo all the bolts, it probably helps. I don't know. It's just a theory. <laughs> yeah. Certainly makes a difference when you take all the bolts out. <laughs> I found another 13mm heat bolt. Still tighter in this side. Yep, yep, still another pipe. <laughs> There's so many bolts in this thing. Can't see them off the rust and the dirt. Yeah, one. Yep. One more. There you go, look at that. It makes all the difference. I definitely really loosened it up by giving it a couple of good whacks with a hammer. It's almost like it comes off when you take all the bolts off. <laughs> it's amazing. Who'd have thunk it? <laughs> Should have gone to spec savers. Why didn't you see them, Lawson? <laughs> Look at that. That made it heaps easier. Just taking the bolts out. Look at that. Look at it. Oh my god. No wonder it didn't turn. You can see a water level there where it's just corroded and died. There's all the brand new parts that we just took out. Brand new back in 1974. Look at the water pump. Oh my god. I wonder why it didn't turn. It's just caked. <laughs> just poking around in the water jacket and down in the cavity here. And look at that. So there's so much. So much uh, build up of rust and sludge. I just wonder if any water's going to throw through, flow through this. I can see. Look, I can see light through there now. That's better. Yeah, just wonder how much water is actually going to flow through the walls of these this engine, even if we get it going. But. I guess if we have continual overheating problems, we'll know why. You can't really get in there to get it out. I don't know if there's a way of flushing it before you put it back together. Yeah, nice. So, just a theory, but I'm gonna give it a go anyway. While we've got the water pump off and we can get to the water cavities, the water jacket or whatever in the, in the engine, I was going to give it a bit of a flush with the garden hose because this is the only time we're going to get to do that and given how much gunk was in there I guess it can't hurt just to put some pressurized water through one side of the engine hopefully it comes out the other side and a heap of junk comes out with it. I'll do it both ways I suppose just to see what we can get out. So here goes. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh, the geyser. Okay. So that's the side that comes up around the heads, I believe. It's coming from the... Yeah, it's just black. It's cut starting to clear up, but that's good. Yeah. 
I'm going to put it in this side now, see what happens. Yeah, more gum. So it's not a bad idea, I don't reckon. You've got to get a lot of that crud out of the, the water jacket of the engine. It's starting to flow pretty clear now. Still a bit of rusty water coming out of this port. It's all clear out of here. Just take the opportunity while all that gizmos are out of the way, just to give it a bit of a jet wash in around and under the engine bay there. There's so much built up dirt there. So. I just grab some rags and stuff them in those water cavities. Um, one that's covered in the automatic transmission fluid. That'll be good. Just looking at that um, oil filter there. Why didn't we change it today? Would have been much easier to get to. Well, that's going to about do us for this episode. Please like, subscribe and share if you enjoyed this, this series. Uh, all the crusty episodes are on a playlist, so um, if that's all you're into, then you can just um, go there to find those. Uh, there is some more interesting developments coming up for Krusty. I know it's been a while, um, but yeah, stay tuned and we'll be back soon. Thanks for watching.